Praise the Lord, everybody. So happy that you could be with us for our midweek online service here from New Life. And we're trusting that since you're watching this online, you're praying at home and walking with the Lord. And I look forward to being with you next opportunity. So thank you for being a part of this online service. Um, We're going to get into the Word of the Lord in just a moment, but let me remind you that you can still give. Even though you're at home, you can give through our website. We have a PayPal link there, newlifechicota.org. Or you can download the Givelify app on your phone and just search for New Life United Pentecostal Church here in Shakota, and you can give through the Givelify app toward any uh, cause or contribution that you want to make through those means. So I want to encourage you to go ahead and get your Bible, grab your Bible, get something to write with, and maybe some paper to take some notes. We're going to be looking at a very important subject here tonight, as you can see. It's called, Where Do We Go From Here?, And I want to direct your attention tonight to Micah chapter 6, and I'm going to be reading verse number 8. Micah chapter 6 and verse number 8. The scripture tells us this prophet, this Old Testament prophet, he he writes, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. He has showed thee. So it's not a mystery. He has showed the old man what's good, what's expected of us. What does the Lord require of us to do justly, love mercy, to walk humbly with thy God? And so we're talking tonight about where do we go from here? You know, Rick Warren, he wrote the following. He said, surfing is the art of riding waves that God builds. God makes the waves. Surfers just ride them. No surfer tries to create waves. If the waves aren't there, you just don't surf that day. On the other hand, when surfers see a good wave, they make the most of it, even if that means surfing in the middle of a storm. The Kenneth Haney, he wrote a book several years ago before he passed away entitled The Irresistible Wave. And he talked about the waves of the Spirit, the waves of the Holy Ghost being poured out in our world. And he said the first, the initial wave, was at Pentecost some 2,000 years ago when the Holy Ghost was poured out in Jerusalem and then uh, subsequently after in the other places listed in the book of Acts. But that was the initial wave, he said. He said the next wave was at Azusa Street in Topeka at the turn of the 20th century, early 1900s, whenever the Holy Ghost was poured out and it began to spread across the country and even around the world. But he said that we're a part of the third wave third wave of God's Spirit, this wave, this tide of, of, the, of the Spirit of the Lord being poured out, and we're a part of that. God's sending another wave of the Holy Ghost, Brother Haney had written. And so if God is sending another wave, this is how I feel tonight, if God is sending another wave of His Spirit, then it's imperative and that's it. it is important that we get our surfboards and we get on the wave and we ride the wave of God's Spirit, that we are part of what God is doing in the last days, in the last times. It's not time for us to sit this one out, but it's time for us to be involved. We are in the last of the last days, and the stage has been set for the appearing of the Lord, for the catching away of the church. It's, it's imminent. It's going to happen at any time. And so things are in place, and so it is important in the last days, as God pours out His Spirit, that we are ready, that we are involved, and that we are looking for the coming of the Lord. And I don't have to tell you tonight that this is interesting and troubling times, that we live in some, um, some very difficult times for many people. This pandemic of 2020 and all that has happened, um, there has been, like we have never seen before, an effort to marginalize God and godliness in our generation and our time. People are trying to do their best to dismiss God and the influence of God in the church in many different facets and areas of life. It, it's just trying to be pushed out. And, and then when you, when you add to that a culture that is attempting to silence and cancel righteousness, the, the cancel culture as it's sometimes called, and while all these restraints and, and, and things like that are being put in place, it seems like the, the mores of morality and the restraints on morality just have been unloosed. And there has been no, uh, no call for a moral and righteous generation. It's been a difficult year for a lot of people. 
and jobs have changed and parts of their jobs have changed. Their home routines for many, many people have been altered and changed during this time. Family structures and family routines have been, have been adjusted during this time. Even churches have changed and the, the way that church is done on many, on many fronts has, has had to change during this time. And now we're, we're on the waning days of 2020. There's, in fact, there's only 22 days left in this calendar year. And then we're going to click over, if the Lord tarries, we're going to click over into 2021. And some are hoping that, well, you know, when 2021 comes, we'll just be able to breathe a sigh of relief and, and you know, we'll put all that behind us and, and things will be so much better in, in 2021. And I hope that that's the case. But some people feel like that everything is just going to get better if we can just get out of this month, this year. They might be right, but they might be wrong. I personally think that the issues and the troubles and the problems that have plagued many people during 2020 are going to be the same issues and troubles and, and problems that plague people in 2021. That just because we change calendar years, problems and issues and, and those types of things do not just automatically go away because we go into a new year. And if that's the case, if we are going into 2021, we need to know the direction that we're going. We need to know what to expect and be ready when 2021 comes. We really do not know what tomorrow will bring. We really do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's not necessarily a sad thing, but Solomon warned us. He said, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And yet here we are, we're the church, we're in 2020, we're at the end of 2020, and and the church, we have questions, we have have concerns, Um, we wonder how much longer will the church remain here on this earth, how much longer will we be here before the Lord takes us away, we want to know if the, the church continues on into 2021, what is our reaction, what is our response going to be moving forward, where should we go? You know, I recently heard uh, Ben Shapiro on his podcast, and I also heard Brother Ken Gurley in one of his devotions. They both were talking about this, uh, this thing called the Great Reset that is coming, that's not too far ahead of us. It's a, it's a push toward globalism. It's a push toward what's, what's coming on the globe and what's coming here on this earth, and it's very interesting Topics. There's a lot of conspiracy that's connected with that, but there's some reality that is also connected with that. And I would just say that even as part of the church, we don't know everything that's coming. We can't figure everything out. Like Paul said, we look through a glass darkly. There are things that we cannot yet perceive what is yet to unfold. But what we can do is that we can implement important principles in our life. We can take hold and add things to our life that's going to guarantee our success in 2021. That if we have these things in our life, we will be able to, like Jesus said, endure unto the end. Because he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So if we have certain principles in our life, we will be guaranteed success. And so this is what we're talking about today. Where do we go from here? We have been challenged through 2020, and now we're fixing to go into 2021. Do we throw up our hands and just quit? Do we throw in the towel and just stop? Or do we push forward? What do we do? So let's look at some of these principles, these goals here. And the first and foremost principle that we want to have in our life. And if if you're writing notes, if you have paper, if you have something to write with, write this down. Put God first always. Simple as that. No magic bullet, no magic formula. Just put God first always. First and foremost. Here's what Paul said to the church at Colossae. He said in Colossians 1.17, that he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, that in all things, look at that verse there, that in all things, he, meaning Jesus Christ, our Lord, that in all things, he might have the preeminence. So in order for 2021 to be a success, we have to make God the priority. God has to rise to the position of first in our lives and that he must be the priority in everything. In all things, he might have 
the preeminence. What happens is too many people, they want to make God, they want Jesus to be their personal assistant. Lord, let me live my life. Let me do whatever I want to do. Let me make the decisions I want to make. I just want you there, Lord, if I have an emergency or if I have questions, you'll always be there to answer my questions or to uh, give me advice. That's what a lot of people want out of the Lord. They want a spiritual advisor. They don't want a Lord. They don't want a Savior. They just want a personal assistant. And the Lord is more than that. The Lord has to be more than just our assistant or somebody that, that walks with us through life. He has to be our life. He has to be what our life revolves around. That's what we're talking about. That in all things, He might have the preeminence. You know, in sports, often teams will rank the best team as number one. And the worst team, they'll rank them at the bottom of the rankings. So if it's a team sport or if it's an individual sport, they will come out with a list of who's the best and who's the worst and list all these teams. Well, when the, the season starts, it's not really so important who's ranked number one on those lists of teams or individuals. What's important is that when the season's over, when, when, the, when everything is finalized, who's number one, who's at the top of the list. And I would just simply say that when all this is over, when, when life is done, when the world is complete, that who is going to be on top and who's going to be number one is going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. He is going to be the, the ruler of it all. Amen. And so, and so it's important today that God remain first in our life, in our decisions, in our daily walk with the Him, in our daily walk with the Lord. The real question is, who's number one in our life? What do we put first in our life? What is the most important? So here's what Jesus said when He was teaching the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what shall you put on? Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more, much better than they? Verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one unto these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow's cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But here's the clincher right here, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for itself, for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. But seek first, he said, the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. So, so what's Jesus telling us? What's Jesus saying here? He is telling us, don't let your life become all about physical and material needs. Don't let your life become about meeting the things that you need physically or the things that you need spiritually because God, or, or physically or materially because God is going to meet those needs for you. If God takes care of the grass, if God takes care of the animals, surely God would take care of his people. And that's the point of Jesus' message here in this, this part of the scripture is that we seek him first, that we put him first, and we don't have to worry about clothing and we don't have to worry about our stature we don't have to worry about things like that that the Lord is going to take care of us through all of those situations I like what Henry Blackaby said he said the church is not need centered or people centered the church is not need centered or people centered the church is God centered and when we put God first and we put God at the center of everything Everything else is taken care of, and the Lord will provide for us. When we talk about who or what or first is in our life, it always, the answer always needs to be the Lord. Priorities are important, and get this, this is worth noting. 
Priorities are important because priorities determine activities. Priorities determine activities. When Jesus called one person to come and be his follower, that person responded to the Lord, let me go first bury my father. Well, his priority was there, so his priority determined his activity. When Jesus called another person to follow him, that person said, first let me go say goodbye to those that are in my household. And again, the, the priority determined the activity. But the point is, is that if our priority is God, he comes before everything. He trumps all of our other activities and our decisions in our life. We put the Lord first. I like what Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 5. He was complimenting the Macedonians and he's writing to the Corinthians about their priorities. And this is what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 5. He said, this they did, not as we hoped, but they first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. They first gave themselves. It was their priority. They gave themselves to the will, the purpose of God. That was their, their first and foremost priority. And what a powerful statement. And, and would to God that could be said of every one of us, that we first gave ourselves to the Lord and to his purpose, to his will. And one thing that I've learned is that when people are under the weight, like we've been under the weight of 2020 and the pressure of our times, I've learned that when people are squeezed the hardest, that that's when you're going to see where their true priorities rest. It's going to reveal something about that person. It's going to show where their, where their true priorities are when they are under that extreme amount of pressure or they're, they're squeezed the hardest by life, it's going to rise to the surface. You're going to see when people go through those trials, you're going to see where their priorities rest. You know, the psalmist said, when my, when my heart is overwhelmed, he said this in Psalm 61, he said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When I'm overwhelmed, when I feel the weight of our times, lead me to the rock. That's my priority. That's my anchor. That's my hope in the storms of life. Where do I go? Where do I return to? Who do I talk to? Is there a refuge? I go to the rock of my salvation. Praise the Lord. And so that is our hope today. That is where we rest. That is where we turn is to the Lord Jesus Christ. When, when God brought his people out of Egypt after their years of slavery and Moses led them out of their slavery, the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And the first of all of those commandments, which I don't think it was by accident, but the first of all of the commandments is recorded there in, in Exodus chapter 20. And it tells us that God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 and 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me before me. You know what Moses was telling those Israelites? After all that you've come through, you've come out of Egypt, you have been delivered. What he was telling them is that you shall have no other gods, that if you want to be successful in life, put the Lord first. If you want to live the most successful life going forward, don't put any of those Egyptian gods or the things that the Egyptians trusted in, don't follow them, but follow the Lord. Put him first. It, it's, it's, like, it's like sometimes when you play cards, um, there are certain card games like spades and like rook, if you, if you like to play those games. There are trump cards. And they, 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 over, they, they are higher and greater value than the other suits of cards. So if you're playing spades and you go through the round and somebody plays a club or they play a diamond or they play a heart, if somebody plays a, a spade, that's a trump card, and it's, it doesn't matter what number is on that spade. If everybody else is playing other suits, that spade is of greater value than all of those other suits. And rook, if somebody calls a certain color as trump, or they play the rook card, depending on how you play, those certain colors become the trump, and they are higher value than, than the rest of the colors. And it, it's, it's of greater So the Lord, he trumps everything else in our life. Doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter what's being thrown at us. God is more important. And that's, that's my point here tonight, is that we have to put the Lord first. As we move into 2021, 
Because if we're not careful, if we do not put the Lord first, and hear me tonight, if we do not put the Lord first intentionally and on purpose, and we're not careful about this, we allow other things to creep into our existence and creep into our life. We allow things like entertainment to become more important than our relationship and our walk with the Lord. We think of entertaining ourselves and finding pleasure for ourselves to be of greater value than our prayer life or our walking with the Lord. If we're not careful, we can begin to think that our acceptance of the people around us or our popularity can be of greater value than walking with the Lord. Or we can put more emphasis upon other relationship if we're not careful and say, well, that relationship is more important than my walk with the Lord. It's more important that I'm with this person than I am to walk with the Lord. See, so we have to be careful. We can, we can put other things in our life and introduce things in our life. We can extra, introduce extracurricular activities. Or we can say, well, this, this sport is more important to me than my walk with the Lord. Or this activity is more important than me walking with the Lord. So we have to be intentional about it. And I don't think it was an accident that the Lord said, this is first and foremost, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the only way to love the Lord, the only way to live for the Lord is to love him with all of our heart, to love him with everything that we have. When Jesus was asked the question, what's the most important commandment? Jesus was asked this question. He said, when he was there at the end of verse 28, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Love God. The only way to love God is with everything. You can't really love God partially or just a little bit. The only way to love God is with everything that you have. The one true God. That's that's pouring ourselves. That's pouring ourselves into a relationship with the Lord. It's giving it all that we've got. It's loving Him on that measure. Paul challenged the Corinthians. The Corinthians had a lot of different gods, a lot of different idols and deities in that, that ancient secular society in Corinth. And Paul challenged them, and he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5, he said, For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but unto us, but to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. Praise the Lord. It is God. God is our priority. If we are going to be successful moving into the next calendar year, it won't be because we've introduced relationships that become a distraction to us or we introduce activities that drag us down spiritually, but it will be because we intentionally mark the Lord as first and foremost in our life. Martin Luther said, your God is whatever you run to for refuge in your time of need. That is to say, keep God in front of you. Keep God first in your life. Follow him. Amen. It can't be self. It can't be pleasure. It can't be success. We're going to serve the Lord. Solomon said, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Here's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, verse 26. He said, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he said, he cannot be my disciple. That's pretty strong language. He said, if, if a person does not hate father, mother, sister, brother, even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. And then he would go on and say in verse 33, So likewise, who he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. The Lord was not literally, obviously not literally telling people you have to hate your father and mother, your family. He wasn't saying you have to literally hate them in order to be his disciple. But what the Lord was communicating that was his way of saying that no other relationship can take the place of the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. He said we have to forsake all. Give it all to the Lord. Just lay everything aside if we're going to follow the Lord. And so is, is there anything, is there anything that you couldn't or you would not give up if the Lord told you to do so? If you're watching online right now, if you're hearing me, if the Lord spoke to you right now and said, 
lay that aside. Is there anything that you would not lay aside to follow the Lord? If the Lord convicted you of something, if the Lord said, if the Lord said, do not wear that anymore. Stop wearing the immodest clothing. If the Lord spoke to you and said that, would you be able to get rid of the immodest clothing? If the Lord said, don't wear makeup. If the Lord convicted you of that and said, don't wear makeup, would you be able to lay that stuff aside and walk, in, walk with him in purity and holiness? Is there a thing that is more important to you than walking in your relationship with the Lord? You see, it, it's good to have a job. But if a job hinders me from my relationship or from doing right, it's time for me to get another job. It's it's good to have a hobby. It's good to have activities and leisure time in our life. But if the extracurricular activities and the things are a weight and they beset me and they hold me back from running this race uh, to follow the Lord, I need to lace those activities aside. We're on the precipice of 2021. Who would have ever believed? Who would have ever thought we are on on the verge of of clicking over to 2021? The Lord's coming is so very near. It's it's good to have friends. It's good to have relationships with all kinds of people. But if those relationships interfere with our relationship with the Lord, if those relationships become a drag, if those relationships are not encouraging us to move forward in our relationship with the Lord, It's time to lay those relationships aside. I think that's why Paul said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't date outside of the church. Don't marry outside of the church. It's a dangerous direction. When you you begin to tie to people that become a spiritual hindrance to you. And so these are the decisions. These are the things we have to look at. Uh, When we talk about walking and and living for the Lord, it's it's good to have clothes. It's... (laughs) Good to have possessions, but we don't want possessions to have us. And if possessions become a problem for us spiritually, then we lay them aside. See, Paul had it all in perspective, and he said it well in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. He said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. And then verse 8, he goes on and he says, Yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Here's what I think the Lord may have, what Paul may have been saying to this church at Philippi. I think Paul might have been telling them, he said, if I get an education, but I lose my soul, what have I gained? I think Paul might have been telling, trying to communicate to them something like this. If I make $100,000 a year, but I don't lay up treasures in heaven. I'm spiritually bankrupt. I think that's what Paul might have been telling them. I I think Paul might have been saying, if if I achieve recognition and people know my name, but when I get to judgment, the Lord doesn't know my name. I think he's saying it was all for naught and I failed. So what does that mean for us today? What does this all come down to us for us today? 2020, moving into 2021. How do we put all this into practice? Two things. Number one, the way we put this into practice is that we walk with God through our prayer, through time in the word of the Lord, and through corporate worship. We walk with God. That's number one. And number two, we put God first when we make our decisions. So we put put God first, but we walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord in prayer, word of God, and corporate worship. Now, this is very important. And I'm coming to a close here in just a couple of minutes. But we have to put God first in our prayer, through prayer, through time in the word, and through corporate worship. That's implementing prayer. If we don't already have these disciplines implemented in our life, it's time. I mean, we're we're at the last of the last days. Right now is the time that we ought to have a prayer life. Five minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, whatever that number is. Daily time with the Lord that we spend talking to the Lord and allow the Lord talking to us. The word of God, daily time in his word. What's our plan? What are we, how are we going to move forward? What's your plan for reading the word of the Lord in 2021? I'm challenging you today. Read God's word every day. Spend time, whether it's a verse, a passage, a chapter, multiple chapters, or a book a day. Spend time every day in the word of the Lord. Prayer, word of God. And then corporate worship, fellowship. 
God's people come together. This is very, very important and very timely for, for where we're at right now because many people have been deceived and many people during this time of pandemic, they have been deceived into believing that they could just get by. They're thinking this, I can get by if I just rarely show up to church or if I just come once in a while. They think that they can get by if they, if they, if they just do online church instead of um, corporate worship, coming together with God's people when we pray together, when we worship together, when we fellowship together. This is so vital to our spiritual health. And, and, and the value of the church coming together is being undermined and it's being dismissed in our generation that it's important. And so we never want to underestimate how important it is for the church to come together because this is when we pray together. This is when we worship together. This is when we edify one another through our times of worship and, and just conversations with one another. So very, very important. When we come to church, we don't want to rush in late and we don't want to be the first one to leave. But I would encourage our church, I would encourage the church to spend time with one another. And I would, I would say this, anyone in the Christian community out there, Christian land, anyone in the Christian community that is actively promoting that online and virtual services are more important than physical gatherings, they do not understand the importance or the value of people coming together. People are lonely right now. People are isolated right now. It is, if there's ever a time that the church needs to come together safely, it's right now. The church needs to be together. People need to be together, whether it's in this church building or it's um, in homes or some other venue. People need to be together. People do not need to be isolated right now, but people need to be together. So, number one is we want to walk with God through the word, through prayer, and through corporate worship. But number two, putting God first in our decisions. Stay with me here because I'm almost done. Putting God first when we make our decisions. Making good decisions requires that we constantly ask ourselves, when I make this, is, is God going to be first? Is this going to affect my relationship with God? Is God going to be first? Is this going to affect my relationship with the Lord? If I take this job, is God still going to be first? If I take this job, is the atmosphere, the environment of this job going to affect me in my walk with the Lord? If I get involved in this relationship, is this relationship going to enhance my walk with the Lord? Or is it going to become a detriment to me walking and, and living for God? How is spending time with this person going to affect me walking with the Lord. These are decisions we make. And this is what I'm talking about. When we make decisions, we have to put them with God being first. <clears throat> Another example would be if I allow this entertainment to come into my house. Is this entertainment going to affect me spiritually? Can God remain first in my life if I have this in my home? Or um, how is this going to affect my walk and relationship with the Lord? How is this going to affect my thought life? How is this going to uh, bless or hinder me? Here's another one. If, if I go on vacation, if I go on vacation to this specific location, or if I take this kind of a vacation, am I going to be tempted to compromise my holiness standards or the, the standards that the church teaches? If I become involved in that, or if I go to this location, am I going to be tempted to, to compromise modesty, holiness standards? These, this is putting God first in everything. This is asking ourselves the question, is this going to affect my relationship with the Lord? Here's another example. If I read this book, if I read this book, is it going to plant immoral seeds into my thought life? It's, it's asking the right questions. It's making God decisions, God inspired decisions. If I take up this activity or if I get involved in this sport, am I going to be hindered? Will it cause me to have a bad attitude? Will it cause pride to Foster, will it foster pride within me? These are questions we need to be asking ourselves. And, and so I would say that instead of subjecting ourselves to things and to activities that hinder us spiritually, that our choices should point us in the direction that puts God first and will enhance our relationship with Him. Let me say that one more time. Our choices should point us in the direction that puts God first 
and enhances our relationship with Him. The most important lifestyle decision we can make is to make room for God every single day. Every single day. Put God first. If we're going to be successful in 2021, if the Lord tarries and we are still here in 2021, we better have some principles. We better have some things in our life that are going to guarantee us success. And first and foremost is that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I think David had it right in the Psalms when he said this. He said, my heart is fixed. My heart's fixed. I will sing and give praise. Joshua said it well, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's my choice. That's my decision today. And so as 2021 nears, God is number one. God is our number one priority in our life. Amen. So I, I encourage you to keep God in that, that premier place. That you put him on the, on the throne and crown him as the king in your life. And make sure God remains in that place going forward. It's what's going to have to happen. It's going to, it's going to become that guiding point, that reference point in our life. That north star, if you will, that point of reference that always points us in the right direction when we have God number one. It sets the order for the rest of our life and the priorities of our life for the direction. Praise God. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about personal relationships. This is another key thing, a very important thing when it comes to being successful in 2021. So I encourage you to be here in person services or here online that we want to talk about these personal relationships and, and dealing with people, relationships. Amen so that we make this a part of our life going forward. May God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this service, this online service. We look forward to seeing you Sunday. Lord willing, our services are 10 o'clock. For live classes, 1050 will be our worship service, and everyone's invited to be a part of that and be with us this weekend. May God bless you. Have a great rest of your evening.